Let's dive into Todoist GTD method. First and foremost, you want to capture anything that comes to mind. That's step one of the GTD method. So in your inbox, you just can put down whatever the heck it is that you think is going to come up. So on the bottom here, it's just like this came to mind, example task. And then in the initial part of the GTD method with the do is you want to just do a brainstorm really quick and take do a brain dump of any ideas that you have any idea that pops up will come out and you do that you consistently do that on a basis that happens hopefully just anytime you have a new idea you want to do this however in the beginning just do a really quick brain dump then after you set up these this sort of mindset you can go and do things to make it happen so for me i have the app on my computer on my phone and i have some integrations that work really well as well so we just go into my browser here and go to uh, anything right so i i have a website now that i'm going to keep plugging until people go and look at um so i have this chrome extension so it's like i get an idea here okay uh add add this to my website please and it's in the today view, so it's going to go and add that in there. Uh, if we also have another nice little integration here with Gmail, so you can do something like use the Todoist integration in Gmail as well to quickly capture any thoughts or ideas that come into your life. And the same goes for something like Microsoft Teams that turn messages into tasks. So the second part of this process is clarify. And if that item, item takes less than two minutes, just complete it and do it right away. Don't do any sort of organization with it or clarification. And if it can be delegated, assign that task to somebody else as well. If it's a non-actionable reference item, something like a file, an article, a document, etc., that you'll need to come back to later, file it in a separate reference project or attach it to the comments of one of the relevant tasks or projects that you have going on. So, so improve your newsletter with quotes. I kind of want to frame this in a way that is interesting. So rather than me saying, look into Ali Abdul's, or rather than me making a task, saying, look into Ali Abdul's weekly newsletter, look into Matt Diavella's weekly newsletter to find inspiration, just type it out in the comments. So look into Matt Diavella's weekly newsletter, or I can add it into a subtask here as well. So it's like, um, check out snail mail newsletter. Because that's actually something I need to do, so it's it's a good example here. So if it needs to be done at a specific task or date, I want to do it by today or I want to do it by tomorrow. This is that part in this step where you you go and you take this clarification and you make sure it happens. Because we can capture the tasks all we want, but if we don't clarify when they're going to need to be done, then it's hard for us to take action on that thing in the proper amount of time. If you know about Parkinson's law, you want to make sure that you have due dates that make sense. If you make them pretty far out, it's going to take until that due date for it to get completed. And if we have a bunch of tasks here that don't need to be implemented anymore, I can delete the, I can either check it off if I already did it, or I can delete it. If I don't need to do this, I actually already did it. I'm not sure if I want to buy a world championship tickets. I can delete the small errand. It happened or I didn't do it. And then that's that step of clarification that we need before we get into organization. Now for organization, once you've clarified the items in your inbox, it's time to sort it into like the right spots uh, in, in reality, like clarifying and organizing your tasks will happen like as you kind of clean up your inbox. So this is kind of a, a similar process. As I mentioned things earlier, it was like I didn't go that next step. So I want to show that now. So for example, this is obviously something that uh, I moved the project to uh, side hustle, right? This obviously goes to side hustle. And this is the organization we're talking about here. It's like move to project, uh, someday slash maybe, improve your newsletter with quotes, move to project, side hustle, may have, yep, move to side hustle. And then I can finish this out real quick. And I don't actually need any of these tasks. So I'm just going to check these off or move them. And that's the clarification I need. Organizing with like a mix of projects here is pretty good. Uh, we have five here as is the max onto the Todoist free version and organizing with a mix of like labels. Like I have these labels here and uh, the different projects are clear. So I can like add a label for uh, YouTube or website. 
And then we can see that within side hustle, I can label things. Uh, this would be more uh, than a label or for this one, the same dealio. We have a website edit that we need to make. The video ideas we can clearly have the YouTube tag attached to it. So a mixture of this. And then for me, I like to have different buckets as well. If I had to do as pro, I would set it up within and make a bunch of sub projects and do stuff like this and make it a sub project. For example, instead of the labels, I'd probably do like a YouTube bucket, a website bucket rather than just having those labels. While you're making projects as per usual with just keyboard shortcuts, if you put hashtag, you can differentiate the projects that they're in so that you can get those buckets underway. So now with the review process, which is really, what's really nice is I personally set time weekly to do a plan week sort of setup with my notion planning. However, with the GTD method in Todoist, it's nice that they actually have a template made out on Todoist.com's website. And a lot of the inspiration for this came from Todoist in general and is really nice that they, they do these articles. I think Todoist is a great website, a great program, has a nice blog, all those sort of things. It's a great company in general. So shout out to them for doing this for us. But if we go to the GTD weekly review, after I tried to play off hitting my keyboard just now uh, to change the view. We look here and we have the weekly review set up and it's it's this time to weekly review that you can change this uh, recurring task for what day of the week you want it to be or you can do it twice a week uh, or make two of these. And basically what you do is you, before you review, you process the digital inboxes, clear off the desk, close all distractions off. It's a nice setup. So this review process is is where we go and we make those planning steps. We say, okay, this task is being done on this day. And we make sure that it's set up in a way with our calendars that works out so that we can get the most optimal time set up to get work done. Now, in order to engage with all this work, we need to go to a, the most important view of all, which is just the today view. So today, for example, I would figure out my website stuff. I have example text, add this to my website, please. And buy world championships, track tickets. No. You will have your actual tasks show up on your step five engage. And that's the part where we take action. We go and we have these systems set up and we plan for a little bit of time to save a lot of time when we're actually working on things. And a lot of people may ask the question, why bother to do all this planning? Just take action. I would say a little bit of planning leads to more ability to actionably work consistently. And that consistency is what will in the aggregate beat out those who don't plan as strategically. So that is my opinion on the subject. And that is why I think the GTD method is great for anybody who's starting out with productivity. And then you can kind of mold your own concept. Whereas I use the GTD method and didn't realize it for a long time. And then I kind of tweaked things to my own liking. So that's how you use the GTD method within Todoist and dive into a great application.